This map you're watching me play through now was made in just 20 minutes, using only the things I'm about to show you. Have fun! Adding monsters. Let's make a room. Just like last time, go to mode, line depths mode, or just press L, right click to start drawing lines, and keep left clicking until you've made a room. Don't forget to place a player start point in things mode. By the way, if you want to change the size of the grid, you can do so with the square bracket keys. This is useful for drawing more accurately. You add monsters the same way you add a player start. In things mode, right click anywhere, go to monsters, and choose a monster to add from the list. The difficulty tags dictate which difficulties the monster appears on. The first two difficulties are easy, hurt me plenty is medium, and the last two are hard. The ambush tag makes it so that the monster won't come looking for you as soon as it hears you, and will wait until it sees you instead. The rest of the things are fairly self-explanatory. You can place weapons, ammo, health, armor, power-ups, keys, and some decorative objects, which for some reason are split into three separate categories. The visual mode camera does nothing in game, and is just for setting a position to go to when you go into visual mode in the editor. Teleporters are a little bit more complex, and will be explained in the next video. I'm going to get rid of these monsters for now. Delete things by pressing the delete key. Changing wall textures. Go into visual mode by pressing W, remember to move with ESDF and right click on any one of the walls. Go to side depths, click in the middle texture, go to all, and choose any texture you like. Press OK, and there you go. You can also do this without going into visual mode, by right clicking on a wall in line depths mode. This is handy for editing multiple textures at once. Just left click to select all the walls you want to edit, right click on one of them, and it should edit them all. If you want to move a wall, hold down right click and drag it around. If you want to move multiple, left click them first to select them, then hold down right click on one of them to move them all. Changing ceilings and floors. Go into visual mode again, and right click on the ceiling. You'll find the option to change not only the ceiling texture, but the floor texture too. This is because they're both part of the same sector. You don't need to know what that means for now, but I'm sure you'll figure it out soon enough. If you set the ceiling to the F Sky 1 texture, it'll appear as the sky in game. You can set the floor to be F Sky 1 as well, but it looks a bit silly. There's a use for it. Somewhere. You can make the ceiling higher or lower by clicking on it and moving the scroll wheel up and down. The same works for the floor. Making more structures. Let's make a pillar. First, draw out a shape in line depths mode, and then in visual mode, click on the floor where you drew it. Move the scroll wheel up to raise the pillar. You'll notice that there are red exclamation marks, and when you test your map in game, the pillar is invisible. This is because its line depths don't have any textures. I'm going to select them all and change their side depths to a nice marble texture. Lovely. Now, let's make a little pool of water. And a rock. and a raised platform. Adding light to your map. If you want to change the brightness of a section of your map, go to brightness mode, left click on the areas you want to change the brightness of, and right click to drag the brightness up or down. If it's acting funny and changing the brightness of areas you don't want it to, Go into Make Sectors mode, click on the sectors that were acting funny, and then go back to Brightness mode and try again. Lanterns and lights in Doom don't actually emit light, but you can make it look that way by drawing little brightness zones around them with the Line Defs tool, and then changing the brightness in Brightness mode. Here are some examples of how the official Doom maps use brightness zones to achieve lighting effects. You'd think by now that we'd be finished, but there's still one more video to go. In it, I'll teach you how to make working doors, elevators, teleporters, and most importantly, exits. Thanks for watching.